let's start out with the, the basic fact on when you were in the Nuwabian Nation. Well, I got to tell you how I first ran into it. Okay, go ahead. All right, I was in the stash house, one of my lieutenant's stash house, and the first time, and on his on, on, on his uh, table, he had some of the Wabian books. You know, I had no idea what it was. I think it was the science of the pyramid or something like that. And, and we was talking, he was talking about how, you know, this information was good, it was there. You know, it would get you uh, up on uh, knowing who you was. So I was like, really, let me see that. So he, I, I took the book, he gave me the book to read, and it was like a tape, and it was kind of beating up the Bible. And, and that's when it started. I realized, I figured out where they was at. They was in Georgia. So my uncle lived down in Georgia, and I came down. We went on the land, and that's when it all started. So what's a stash house? What do you mean? Stash house is a place where, where, where you hide your drugs for the day. You would always rotate them. So I was in there just, just, just chilling, you know, in the midst of the day doing what we do. And, you know, that's the stash house where you stash drugs at. Like musical chairs or something, like you're moving back and forth. So, no, right. yeah. so when you came about the Nuwabians, he, they had already moved to Georgia then? Yeah, they had already moved to Georgia. And they talk, and, and so they was always talking about the pyramids in Georgia, the pyramids in Georgia. And so, you know, me and my uncle came down, I went, went on the land and um, seeing what the pyramids was. Yeah. And that's when it started, the, the, that's when it started the education. Right, supposedly, of who I was, you know, as a black man in America. So that's when it started for me. So are you saying that's what attracted you to to them? What well, well, you know, like hip hop kind of kind of opened the door, you know, like Carol Swan stuff like that with the music, ed, you know, like the education within the music, you know, Public Enemy and all them. That kind of started to make you realize it was more to it, more to uh, uh, us being here in America. You know what I'm saying? You know, we all raised Christians. And they ain't giving you that type of real information you need. So it was hip-hop that started. And then, you know, Malachi, you're kind of, you know, like, like filled the fire, made you want to read. Because you got to read the books. That's, that's the whole game. Read the books. And don't come with no manual on how to read books. You know, what, what a source is. And I got none of that. All I knew was, let me read this book, right? Let me see what it is. And so that whole uh, Niwapin thing was big. I came in on Niwapo. Right, that, that 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 that's probably one of the last stages they had. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they didn't switch it up by now, but that was like the last stage. It, it, it wasn't Christian, it wasn't Sumerian, it wasn't Hebrew. It was Nuwapo. You know, re really a form of. It, it was like it was atheism. Yeah, you read the book. Is there God? You know, you had books called Is There God series. So it was really, you know, it was a real. That was a real good spot for me right there. No religion, I was with that. So, you know, that's the trap that got me. Yep, absolutely. So he, before you got there, he had already morphed into God himself, and then it changed into there is no God? Yeah, it's, it's well, it's very interesting because a lot of people talk about yoga, but they never really sat in the class. I used to sit in the classes, um, and actually, he was really just break when I came in, right? He was basically just showing you how the Quran, the Bible, and all those was wrong. Now, little did I know before that, he had people thoroughly entrenched in the Quran, thoroughly entrenched in the Bible. But by the time I got there, it was time out for all of that. So I kind of caught the spot where it was, and it had nothing to do, it was about knowing, supposedly. You know, knowing what it was. You know, knowing that the scriptures was just that written by people, the whole nine yards. So that, that you know, that's, that's interesting right there. So I, I don't know what he was, but he was in all the books. Yes, he was in all the books, and that image was always there. So that, that over and over again, repeatedly seeing that image over and over again. So, you know, like we called him Pops. I said it. I called him Pops because that's what everybody else called him. I didn't think he was my father. So if a person was basically void of having a father figure in their life, or, 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 or a mother figure in their life, then they might have been really, really in trouble. So for me, the experience wasn't bad because it got me back up on my reading game. And it got me back up on studying. But I used to hear things like, for instance, like, well, you don't need to read no other books. I found that kind of weird for me. Coming from the place I came from in Baltimore, right, it was essential to read. You know, all my friends, our whole thing was let's read, let's be a little more intelligent 
than the everyday street person. You know, we you know we had our, we was at the level, so we our thing was read, understand business, whole nine yards. So when I so so being in the New Wapping cult, I found it very weird that people were saying we don't need to read no other books and everything that York says was right. You know that that was nonsense for me. So I used to always routine routinely get into arguments over that. I say, come on, man, how can one person know everything? How can one person make mistakes? So my mind wasn't even geared for that. My mind was geared strictly for the information on uh, 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 deciphering or beating up religion. And I stayed right in that little sweet spot right there. So what was a typical day like on, on the land? Like what, what, what are the day-to-day -day activities? I used to just doing? come up on Sundays. Again, you had people that actually lived up there. I guess they was gone. Um, and I felt like they wasn't living as good as they could have lived. You, you feel me? It was like a struggle for them. Like I never understood that. I never understood that struggle. But when we, but on those Sundays, uh, which w it was open to the general public, right? Uh, everything was smooth going. It was very peaceful, um, very, uh, very educational at times. It was a good show. York would come out, do a good. He was an excellent storyteller with mixing the history in there. You know, I say this all the time. He was a top ranked pseudo. At that stage, I didn't know what a pseudo was or a pseudoscientist was, but now in looking back in hindsight, man, he was tops, not pseudo. You know, so, so, so actually he shaped my career on being able to see what a cult was, what it wasn't, what pseudoisms and, 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 and what uh, scientific uh, um, study was. All these things I kind of picked up right there. So that was a, I mean, that was a good experience for me. But then it all went bad. You know, they ran up on the land, arrested them and all that. And, 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 and that's when I had to come to grips with the reality that I was entangled in something. And I'll never forget it. Never forget it. Um, my girlfriend at this time, she said, would you leave your children up there on the land with them? And I had to say no. And that's when I woke up. No, like, no, I couldn't leave much. I couldn't trust that. So I found it very offensive when people don't put their babies first. The babies are the most important thing we have. So a crime against the babies is a crime against humanity. So, you know, I chose my children. So do you think that you were ever... Um under his spell? Because it doesn't sound like you really were. Yeah. Um, of course I was. Of course I was under a spell of faith and belief. So the whole thing was based off of not believing, but at the end of the day, there was no instruction on how to determine the difference. That's the part. So you would always have to believe what was written in the books. So we got no methodology. So you need methodology and there was no scientific literacy. They, was, they, they, they were speaking, science, giving scientific terms for things, but it wasn't uh, a, a class and teaching you how to one research and, and how to become scientifically literate. It wasn't that because they would be the tools that one would use to actually take the information and put it through the strainer. So we never was given those tools. And I say it all the time, scientific literacy will help you identify the charlatans that come amongst you. I say this all the time. So we wasn't given those things. We was actually given faith and belief, right? Stating that you should not believe. But it was always good to believe in what he was saying. You know, don't, you know, question, he would say, question me. Look it up. But if you're not giving me the tools on how to look it up, then because you can find anything you want to find on the internet that agrees with your position. Most people don't know that. So the thing is, how do you decipher the differences, right? Well, understanding methodology, which is key uh, to not finding your way in the cult, methodology, right? How do you research? What is the source? What's the primary? These things are essential in the research and information. And so we never was given those tools. So if we was, then we would not need to be in there. You wouldn't have needed to be in that cult. So what was it that you were saying about um, 
it was something to the effect of the cult leader puts themselves, and you could please use Malachi York as an example. So the cult leader puts themselves as God or between you and God, the mystery, you were saying like... Um, so, man, uh, spirituality is really personal. That's why everybody has a definition. You can put 10 people in a room and ask them, what is spirituality? You can even say, add it, what is spirituality in God to you? And they all have a different reference point, and they all have their own definition. That's because it's personal. That's why there are thousands of religions around the world, because religions are really cultural, and religions are based off of a few people coming up with an idea and getting the rest of the people to follow them. So it's personal. So what, what York did was, he got in that personal space, right? He became the deity. He became the deity. When really it's supposed to be personal, because you're never going to see God, right? But he was the God you used to see. So when a person is trying to come to the knowledge of knowing, knowing themselves, right, you would come to the knowledge of knowing York. That's the problem. That's the problem with all cults, that you never come to grips with knowing yourself, you come to grips with knowing the person, right? And you follow that person instead of knowing yourself. And so you don't think about yourself, right? You think about that person and, and, and what you should do for that person. But see, that's, that was way too deep for me. I guess I was a little bit too arrogant, right? I, I, my mother, my father taught me just to have confidence in myself. So I never, I, I never got to the point where I replaced, you know what I'm saying, York in my personal space. I never got there, but that's what cult leaders do. They actually replace themselves and put themselves into your personal space. So you never get a chance to know yourself. You know them more than you know yourself. And I guess that's the key mechanism in cults, is knowing the leader as opposed to knowing yourself. Then they can tell you anything without question. How were the um, the victims, uh, the alleged victims of York, treated? Did work? Did the Nuwapians believe them when they came out with their stories? Or, or impossible? That because because he's in your They're space. Hear my question. He's in your. It's, it, and it's impossible for the people that is entrenched in the cult to hear the victims, because the victims are speaking against their self. You get that? So, so as, as, as being in a cult, Malachi York becomes you. He becomes your personal space. And so when anybody speaks against York, it's almost like that person is attacking you. And so they go against that completely. No reason in the whole situation. No reason whatsoever. You just totally discount everything they say because you feel like they are attacking you. Remember, because you have replaced you with York. So you protect York like you're protecting yourself. And so the truth ain't ain't the truth ain't gonna be that. Yeah, it takes a strong, it's like being strung out on crack. Okay? Uh, you can't see the truth. Crack does that thing right there. Crack actually replaces the real you with the crack. Because all you think about is the crack. Any drug, alcohol that you get entrenched in, it actually replaces people. That's why people say, we don't know him no more. Because you have become that drug. You know what I'm saying? You, you have become crack. You have become alcohol. You have become heroin. You, know, you, you, you eat it. You sleep it. You that. You smell it. You feel it. It's you. And that's why drugs are so hard to get off of. And that's why cults are so hard to get out of. That's why religion is so hard to question. Because you actually replace yourself with that religion. It tells you what to do, how to do, and what to do. It, you know, that's why the Bible speak to people. That's why the Quran speak to people. You know, that's, remember, remember how we used to do this, you know, when we was younger. If you had a problem or something, you open up the Bible and let, it, and let it speak to you. See? So we were starting along that course of replacing the real you with that indoctrination. So, yeah, they wasn't listening to the people that went through those scenarios. So that's hard. So, you know what I mean? That's hard being on that side of the fence. Something actually happened to you. And then there's different levels to the cult. I never was in an inner circle. You know what I'm saying? I was on the, I called the friendly outskirts, right? It, like it was some things that just would not allow me to go that deep into it. You know, I, I, still, I still knew who I was. I wasn't ready to replace uh, myself with York. 
I didn't think he was infallible. I never thought that. I thought he was the, you know what I'm saying? I had money coming from Baltimore. I had money. I had bread. So what? What? I, I'm not impressed by that. I'm impressed with reading these books. And see, I never had the keys to what a good book was and what a bad book was. Now I do. I have developed that. So now I know the difference. Matter of fact, my whole thing is based off of uh, methodology. Uh, formed a team. Team of scholars. I'm a raw squad to just do that. So that no other people will get caught in the cult. So we teach scientific literacy. This is, this is, this is a valuable tool for the community. I'm saying that's why the Nile Valley was so serious, because they had scientific literacy. That, that's why people came around the world to go to Africa, to go to Egypt. They came around the world to go to Kemet, not for the gods, because everybody developed a god in their own country, in their own land, after their own language, after their own kind. But what the Nile Valley had, they had scientific literacy. They had science, they had schools, they had universities. So people would literally go come from around the world to get that knowledge, to get that wisdom. And this is what a cult, a cult pushes that literacy out the door. So are you of the thought that most religions are based on a cult personality? Like there's a central figure in most of these religions? In all religions, there's a key figure. All of them. Whether it be Islam, Christianity, Judaism, there's always this key figure. And this key figure is worshipped. Even in death. And all of them, they wait for that person to come back some kind of way. Same with the Malachi Yoke, they waiting for him to get out of prison. All, all the cults you can name, they think they lead it, coming back on the wheel, come, ain't gone nowhere, coming back. All of them, that's a running theme in religion. A charismatic male figure. And I found that to be very, very interesting. So they're male orientated. I call them male warrior homosexual cults. That's what I call them because it's based off of the man. It's not based off of the mayat where the balancement of the male and the female is always based off of the male. So I call the male warrior homosexual cults. And then well, there you have it. And so these cult leaders, the ones that become uh, classified as dangerous when their, their crimes become publicly known and sometimes there's charges, sometimes there's not because of you know various reasons, but it seems to me, and you can tell me what your thoughts are, that these, these cult leaders always graduate from having a female partner into um, ma other males and children. I haven't found one that has it. The, the, the whole code idea is really based off of dysfunction. And in an environment where there's dysfunction, a, a deviation, you know what I'm saying? Um, you'll find behaviors that should not be practiced. Like, for instance, messing with the children. These leaders get to a point, and I'm not going to say all of the cult leaders, because I don't know all of the cult leaders. But they get to the point where they think they can have everything. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try the next thing. Let me try this. Let me try that. And they think they can get away with anything. Even to form a cult, right? These modern cults, um, character. You know, character. The truth ain't in them. So when you have those character issues like that, it's a possibility that you can deviate into all type of uh, sexual deviant behavior. It just is. Like, like I say, like, what would push a person to mess with the babies? You know, right in front of your face. What, what would force a person to use that type of power over another individual? You know, we, you, your, your character is in question. And so these cult leaders, their character is in question right from the start. Because they don't give you the tools to know the truth for yourself. So really, the environment that was set by the transcontinental kidnapping trade set the environment of ignorance amongst our people. That's what it really did to us. It made us ignorant of understanding life on life terms. And it put us in a position of ignorance. They put the information in us, so we're ignorant now. We can't read, we can't write. We know for sure 
that the African could read. We had languages in Africa. We had writing in Africa. We couldn't read their language. So it put us in a position of ignorance, ignorant of the ability to read their languages, whether it's French, whether it be Spanish, whether it be English. We was ignorant, void of books, right? So then they give you what they want to give you. This creates an environment of misinformation. Uh, PTSS, post-traumatic slave syndrome, this is all part of this. And so now, now fast forward, man, it's, it's the perfect, I call it the perfect storm. Lack of money and lack of knowledge is the breeding grounds for cults. So people take advantage of us because we're not scientifically literate. People give us pseudoisms, uh, the age of enlightenment, Europeans, uh, consider themselves coming into the age of enlightenment. Uh, they consider themselves starting to be scientific. And even with that, they, there was, there was pseudoscience ruled today in this environment. It was pseudoscience, like black people come from monkeys and apes. Uh, there are different races. But all that, so, so you got an environment of science, right, that was, that, that was more, pseudoscience was more prevalent in science, right? Then you had the Bible, and in the center of all that, in the Quran, is our people. We're in the center of that storm. Both sides claiming superiority. European are superior based off of their cranial size. This is what they said in science. They taught in Harvard and Yale. Okay? They taught that. That we were lesser. That we were more closer to the apes. They misconstrued Darwin's theory of natural selection. So they say Darwin was the father of evolution, and he wasn't. He was the father of natural selection, which is one mechanism in evolution. Then on the other side, right, you have the Bible. What the Bible teaches? That the Hebrews are God-chosen people. Superior attitude, like we're the greatest humans because we got the God of bounding universe, and he has chosen us. So see that thinking? And in between that thinking is us. And so you got the age of discovery. You got the Papist Bulls written by the popes, and it was clear. Uh, they got the demarcation line. They drew a line down the map. You got Portugal and Spain fighting. The popes say, look, y'all can't be fighting like that. Draw the line down the map. Uh, Spain, uh, you can have the Americas. Portuguese, you can have Africa, right? And, and the Papist Bull said that if you, if you discover a land that does not have a Christian monarch, okay, you can enslave the inhabitants and bring them to Christ. See, that's superior thinking and thinking that if you're not this, you're not that, then we have a right uh, to take you. Well, the same way with the cults. You know, if you're not this, if you're not that, I have a right over you. I, I am the leader. See, that's superior thinking. That superior thinking leads to all type of deviant behavior. It, it, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. And so I said all that to say that this environment that has been created by the transcontinental kidnapping, uh, kidnapping trade makes us easy picking for cults. Income, social media. Income, social media now. Man, where everybody's a star, where it really doesn't take the study. It's a breeding ground for cult like leaders now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even have to have, your game don't even got to be tight. At least Malachi, your game was tight. Now you don't got to have no land. You don't got to have no place for people to come, like Daddy Grace and them. You don't got to have all that. All you got to do is have a microphone, right, and a computer, and now you that dude. So now you see people giving all their money up, spending three, four $400,000 for schools, spending money for quote-unquote uh, uh, daycares, you know what I mean, that aren't being produced. People just giving their money away. Uh, uh, I'll send you this document for this. It's almost like what the Europeans do with the church thing, where they on not, they, no, where, where they on television and they give you that uh, send your free will offering. I'll give you a prayer. All these things are cult behavior. All these things are based off your ignorance. And so it's a shame when the very people you trust that look like you actually put you in a situation to follow them with their complete foolery. It's a shame. But like I said, uh, scientific literacy will stop all that. It puts you in a state of understanding reality. Simple, simple science. Science is simply the study of nature. 
It gives you a mechanism to put up aside the information that you're getting before you go in the court. If I'd have had, if I'd have had that tool, I would have never been in the court. I would have never been in the court. But I didn't have that tool. And so literacy, understand the world you live in, uh, will actually change that. But until that happens, most people, most people aren't scientifically literate. Right? But that is clearly a tool that will help you decipher the right and the wrong. Do you think that um, Malachi York and other cult leaders, I'm just checking my levels, believe their own hype at the end of the day? Like, do you really think these people believe what they're saying? Like, I am God. Like, do they morph into believing their own they, hype? Yes. Uh, it's a strange thing, human mind. You start to believe your own shit. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, they really think they're that. Uh, you see this in athletes. Say, reword that because I don't know if people get what you were saying. Like, because they can't hear my question. Uh, Do they start believing their own... There's a, there's a level to being a cult leader. Cult leaders start out small. And Jesus Christ started out small. He didn't have a big father, right? He didn't get the big father until he died. <laughs> cult leaders start out small, and as their thing grows, they start to believe their thing. Just like athletes uh, at young ages, they're good on the field. People start saying, you the great, you the great. Before you know it, you got this arrogant athlete that really thinks he can do no wrong. It's, it's part of human behavior that if not corrected, right? If not put up against a moral code that help you understand. That's why culture is so important. Culture help you not go down that route. If you avoid a culture, you're going to go right there with that arrogancy based off of thinking you're the best of all time. And these cult leaders, they literally more than that, right? And before you know it, they really think they're, they are the God, reign supreme. They can do no wrong. They really believe us. They really do. You can see it. You know, why else would Malachi Yor plead guilty? I mean, no, he did plead guilty. No, he took it. He did. He pleaded guilty, right? Then he take the plea bargain back. That's just arrogancy. Because really, he would have been out of jail by now. But he actually believed that he was that dude. And so he would never get home. Yep, so he had good cult leaders. Yep, it stages to it. You can see it growing. The Jim Jones thing, all of them, they grow to this thing that they can't even handle themselves. Yep. Well, and the other thing is that, um, and you can comment on this if you want to, is that in nature and biology and human systems, planetary systems, everything are innate checks and balances that are set up so that something doesn't just go, keep growing out of check or going too fast. The earth is not spinning out of control. You know, gravity is keeping it in check, kind of. And so cults have no checks and balances when it's just that, when that one enigmatic figure and everybody else is just, you know. That's why the study of nature is so important because the study of nature will teach you Nature teaches you that there are checks and balances. Nature teaches you that when you're out of order, nature puts you back in order. So like the carbon dioxide, over time, the carbon dioxide, the levels, will be lowered. That's just how nature works, right? Either it'll be lowered or the thing that's causing it will get destroyed. 99% uh, of all living organisms has, has, been, has been extinct on Earth. Cult has no checks and balances. The preacher has no checks and balances. Uh, so when also you study African culture, uh, like Shaka Zulu was routinely said, he used to get mad at his council because they didn't check him. So African cultures have councils where the quote unquote leader can't get out of control or not supposed to be out of control. The council is supposed to check him or her. And so there's no such council Right? In cults, there's always what? One charismatic leader. This leader's a good speaker. This leader uh, uh, um, is educated. Might not be formally trained, but he's educated. Uh, seemingly knows more than everybody else. Has all the answers. Um, 
Full of it, though. Completely full of it, with no checks and balances. So that's always a recipe for disaster, uh, not having checks and balances. And so through the study of nature, cultures are formed around nature, supposedly. The best cultures are. Like in the Nile Valley, and I keep bringing this up, uh, they have, especially the Nubian culture, had, uh, you, you're talking 3,000 years of unchanged government based off of nature, nature-based. Uh, nature-based religions. Not to say that they didn't regress over time because they did, where you start to get these charismatic leaders to do the same thing. Like they say, absolute power corrupts. I believe that to be the truth. What do you account for the civil rights movement and black power movement in the 60s? Do you think that's cult-like or that was like, what do you, what do you think about that era? Uh, well, so we have these responses to racism, white supremacy. On Monday, you are kidnapped victim, enslaved. On Friday, you are sharecropper. But on Monday, food, clothing, and shelter was taken care of. On Sunday, you got to pay for the food, clothing, and shelter in the same place. But they claim they set you free. Did they really? You put a financial burden on you. Then you get to Jim Crow, where you can't go to this bathroom, that bathroom, the signs, all these, these crazy laws. Well, before the uh, Jim Crow, remember they used to lock up the, the prison industrial system. Uh, the new Jim Crow. But they used to lock up people, lock you up, right, have you working for free, all right? Then after all that, then you get uh, uh, the, 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 the quote-unquote civil rights movement. Uh, civil rights movement was basically a leave your own businesses and come to white people's businesses. That, that's what it really amounted to. It allowed us to do things, watch this, it allowed us to do things that we couldn't do before. But based off of the lack of knowledge of self and who we was, we automatically gravitated to the things that we thought was the best because we was always taught that they were the best, that they God was the best. Why, what, what other reason would you have to change your gods? Inferiority complex. So we suffer from an inferiority complex. We think our spiritual governing systems aren't up to par. So we transform today uh, governing systems. Um, Transforming their governing system, religious systems. Civil rights moved us along. It gave us some rights, but we lost our businesses. So, you know, they always need us to spend our money, though. See, this is the part I've understood. They always needed us to spend our money. They just didn't want you to sit at the front. They always wanted you to ride the bus. They just wanted to be able to pick and choose where you sat at. So they've always needed your money. The civil rights did was... It allowed you to move freely on a bus, quote unquote. It allowed you to sit wherever you want to sit in the store, quote unquote. And um, man, but you forgot about your own businesses. Because you know, like white people water is just colder. And 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 that system right there is is cunning and baffling because, like they say, everything is different, but nothing has changed. So I find that to be very, very interesting. No disrespect to Martin Luther King. He did what he was supposed to do. Uh, you know, I appreciate those brothers and Malcolm. I appreciate the struggle. I appreciate that. Like, you know, can't take away from that. We needed that. But the fact of the matter is, what are we doing after that? We ended up in these cults based off of we still have not addressed the issue of our ignorance. We have not found a way not to be ignorant. We have not. That's When I use the word ignorant, I mean not to know. Not to know. So, so how it, what is it that we need to know? Well, science, the very definition of science is to know. So we're not, we're not pushing for that. These days, the rhetoric uh, in a community, I'm talking about the conscious community is, well, we don't need books. We don't need the white man's science. Man, Malcolm and them would probably be turned over in their grave. You know, Martin Luther King was very educated on sad subject matter. More... More so than most people give him credit for being. Uh, I think he had a, a degree in theology, right? So he understood exactly. When you go to theology school, you know that, that Jesus Christ story kind of go out the window a little bit, right? So it's always been our educational level, right? It's always been our social economics, right? 
But see, but this is what the cult claims to give you. It claims to give you uh, economic stability. That's what the New Orleans was. Well, we're going to build this land. It's our land. When we can live on this land. We had this land. So now we got our land. We should say that's our land. But we wasn't getting the money off that land. Right? So it claimed to give us a false sense of stability. That's what it claimed to do for us. It claimed to take care of uh, our social economic status. It claimed to do all these things, but at the end of the day, it was only filling the pockets of Malachi. You know, I think when they locked him up, you might have had about 300000 in the mattress or something like that. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Absolutely. So what has become of that group now? Still running around. Uh, they, 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 uh, he's, every year, they do this thing where he's coming home. Every year, he's coming home. Now, how long will that last? Uh, they still they still teaching, but uh, we have pushed the envelope, uh, particularly uh, in the Amaral squad. We have pushed the envelope so much that now you got to know what the hell you're talking about, right? And so, you know, I based the Amaral squad, I, I put that together um, so that we could make people aware of the world around them so that no baby will find himself in a cult again based off of their lack of wisdom, based off of their uh, uh, lack of knowledge of who and what they was. So they still doing the same old thing, but it ain't as sharp as it used to be. It ain't as sharp as it used to be. Not at all, because now it's an environment, uh, we've created an environment of learning. 